Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on GameFound called Endeavor Deep Sea. This game is designed by Carl Deweiser as well as Jarrett Gray and published by Burnt Island Games who are helping sponsor this tutorial. And in this game, players are going to be trying to assemble the best crew or the best squad to try to have the greatest impact on the oceans. That's right. This is actually a follow-up to another game called Endeavor Age of Sail that was released a few years ago. And so this game is for one to four players and features three different modes of play across eight different scenarios. And so today we're going to be showing you how to play it. But before we begin, we do need to mention that everything that you see here is considered a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the future. Now, if you are interested in this campaign, there will be a link in the description down below, which you can check out at your leisure. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for our two player game of Endeavor Deep Sea. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the ocean. Mission number one. That's right. It is called the call of the ocean because the ocean is calling to us to right. help it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, our ocean over here is made up of five different levels of depths. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be dependent on the mission that you're playing. The game is going to come with four of these mission boards and they're double sided. And so like I was mentioning earlier, we're starting with mission number one, which is the starter mission. And in addition to our starting ocean setup, the mission board also shows all the ways that we can score points in this particular mission, as well as our impact board, which is going to change uh, from mission to mission. Sure. Now, before we continue, we do have to mention that each scenario can be played in three different ways. You have the multiplayer competitive, the multiplayer cooperative, as well as a solo mode. And so for today's tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the competitive mode of play. Now, the game is played over the course of six rounds. And so each player starts the game with one team leader who is going to be our starting specialist that will help dictate the types of actions that we can take. In addition, we each also have our own player boards that features four different tracks. And these tracks are going to allow us to become stronger and do things better. We also have a fifth track here, which is our research track, which sort of serves as a type of currency in the game. Mm -hmm as well as our own player pieces that consists of three vessels, one of which is starting on the ocean board, as well as our player discs, which start the game unavailable to us until we bring them to our staging area to place out onto our specialists. Now, each round consists of two phases, starting with the preparation phase, where we start each round by recruiting a specialist and possibly gaining some discs into our staging area, followed by the staging phase, where each player takes turns taking actions until each player passes. Mm -hmm. During the staging phase, in order to take actions, you have to be able to place a disc onto an available specialist. Mm -hmm. And so as you can see, the specialists are going to dictate how many actions you can take in a round. Now, the game comes with a specialist tray that mm -hmm. looks like this. And uh, as a reminder, this is considered a prototype, so so some of the colors, including this tile, are not, <laughs> not accurate. Sure. And the specialists are divided into five different tiers, depending on the number of symbols at the top right-hand corner. And so at the start of each round, starting with the start player, who has the wave token, each player is going to recruit a specialist according to their reputation track, which is this topmost orange track right here. Your recruitment level, which is the number of symbols according to where your marker is, is going to determine what tier of specialist you can recruit. So at the start of the game, we all start at tier one, which means we can only recruit from this column of specialists here. When recruiting a specialist, they stay face up in front of you on their junior side, which is the blue side. And oftentimes they give you an immediate benefit for taking them. Mm -hmm. So for example, this pilot gets me one impact, which we'll talk about in a second. In addition, most specialists also provide you an action that you can take when placing one of your discs on the available space. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the game, you'll also have the opportunity to promote your specialist to their senior side. And so that is an example of a specialist that you can hire. So say, for example, I'm the start player, I'm going to hire <laughs> this specialist. After hiring a specialist, then you'll gain more player discs from your supply into your staging area, depending on your inspiration track, which is this green track right here. Your effort level, which is the number of discs shown below your track marker, tells you how many discs you get from your supply into your staging area. And so in this case, I'll get one. Mm -hmm. Once you're done with this, you go into the last part of the first phase. And this is how you're going to be able to reassign some of those discs that have already been placed out on specialists. Mm -hmm. You're going to look at your coordination track. And however many uh, icons you see below, that's how many discs you can actually pull off a specialist and reassign to the staging area. That's right. And this is important because during the actions phase, you're going to need to take uh, discs from your staging area to place onto your specialist tokens. And mm -hmm. those don't come back automatically at the end of each round. Right. So this will be a good way for you to 
free up both the specialist as well as your disc. Yeah. So as you can see, these tracks are going to be very important in how you perform all the different actions in the game. That's right. Not only do they give you access to stronger specialists and more supply discs, these tracks will also score you points at the end of the game depending on how far along the tracks your marker has reached. Mm -hmm. Now, once everyone has completed their preparation phase, you then move on to the second phase, which is the staging phase. This is where you're going to be taking all your actions. That's right. During this phase, starting with the start player, each player is going to be taking turns, taking one action each until everybody passes. And so on your turn, in order to take an action, like we were mentioning, you have to take a disc from your staging area and place it on an available specialist, just like that. And then you take the action as depicted on the tile. And for our team leader, they actually show all five of the uh, basic actions that we can take in the game. Mm -hmm. But again, you must choose one. So let's just briefly discuss them so that you have an idea as to what to expect. And so the first type of action is called travel. Our vessels start the game in this space on this board over here. And so as a general rule of thumb, each of the actions uh, corresponds to a specific symbol. And for travel, it is a ship uh, steering wheel. Yeah, the helm. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now traveling allows you to move from different zones. And so each of these boards are called zones as well as different depths. And so this starting board here is a surface zone. It's right at the surface of the ocean, right. zero meters. Now the distance that we can travel to is determined by our fourth track, otherwise known as the ingenuity track. This determines both the number of zones that we can travel to, as well as how deep into the ocean we can travel. Sure. Which at the start of the game is just one. And so when moving, uh, whenever you arrive at your final destination, you actually get an arrival bonus, which is underneath the uh, helm symbol, which in this case, is a research. And if you're traversing more tiles, you do not collect the bonus depicted on all the tiles just at your final destination. Yes. And over the course of the game, we'll have the opportunity to gain more vessels into the launch zone, which is this middle zone here. Mm -hmm. And doing so will also get us the arrival bonus of that specific zone, which is going to be another uh, player disc. The next type of action is called the sonar action. And this has to do with different uh, sonar tracks that you'll see on the different boards. And so the sonar action is depicted by this symbol right here. So these are all different sonar tracks that you can place your discs on. Mm -hmm. This is also an example of a type of action that requires you to spend two discs rather than just one. Right. You're gonna spend one disc on the specialist in order to take the action, and then you'll also need a second disc to actually place onto a sonar track right. like that. Now, another general rule is whenever you take actions having to do with a specific zone, one of your vessels must be in that zone. Mm -hmm. So if I wanna take uh, the sonar action and place a disc on this spot here, my vessel would have to be there, which it is. And this board actually features two different sonar tracks, so when taking this action, you're going to choose an available track and place your disc on the leftmost spot in that track, mm -hmm. getting the rewards listed on it. And so in this example, I would gain a research as well as an advancement on my green inspiration track. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the main ways in which you're going to be able to advance on your four tracks by placing your discs onto the different spots here, gaining you that immediate benefit. Sure. Now that I've placed my disc here, the next player who chooses this track for a sonar action has to place their disc on this spot, allowing them to take a discover action. Right. And so this is actually the symbol that you'll see on a majority of the sonar action spaces, because discovering allows you to place additional ocean boards onto the main board. And so in this example, the red player must take two boards from ocean zones three or deeper. And so you could take both boards from the same stack or you can mix and match as long as it fits the requirement as shown on the space. Mm -hmm. So of the two, the one that I don't wanna keep, I would put underneath its designated stack. Mm -hmm. And then the discover tile has a discovery bonus at the top left. So the player who discovers this tile is gonna be able to take this benefit. In this case, I would get a bump on both the yellow as well as the blue track. That's right. And then you would place this tile right there, yep. right? Which I mm -hmm. guess we have a little bit of space for. A little for. space, might as well. Now, since we're on the topic of advancing on the blue track, um, this is the way that we're going to get more of our vessels into play. As soon as your marker hits any of the vessel symbols, then you place one of your vessels onto the uh, launch zone, mm -hmm. which in our mission is the sea star sure. right there. And by the way, if the zones that you must draw from are not legal in terms of placement, then you draw from the uh, next available stack that is legal. Mm -hmm. 
The next type of action is called dive. And this has to do with these dive tokens that you'll see on some zones that have these dive token spots. Mm -hmm. And so dive tokens look like this. They give you the choice of two benefits, either a specific amount of research or a specific uh, bonus action type, which in this case is a travel action. And so taking the dive action allows you to just draw the topmost one and keep it in front of you until you decide to use it. Sure. You can either use it to gain the research or you can use it before or after taking a main action to take the action depicted. So again, you cannot use it as your action. Mm -hmm. It has to be in conjunction with taking another one, if that makes sense. Yep. Because on your turn, you always have to place a disc onto a specialist. Now, if you don't want to use it, at the end of your turn, you can save at most one of these, but you can also spend it on the turn that you got it. Sure. Now, similar to the sonar action, our last two actions require you to spend two discs each. Mm -hmm. And they are the conserve action that has to do with these conservation sites that show a sea turtle on them, as well as the journal action that has to do with these journaling sites with a journal symbol. Mm -hmm. Now, when taking the conservation action, unlike the sonar action, you're going to just choose one of the available spaces along the track. You don't have to choose the leftmost, mm -hmm. but you do have to spend research in order to take this action. And the amount of research you have to spend depends on the space that you're going to place your disc on. Sure. So if I wanted to place my disc on this space right here, I would have to spend four research. And in doing so, it would give me an advancement on the uh, orange track at the top here, as well as an impact on the impact board, which we haven't discussed yet. And then I would place my disc on that spot. Now in a future turn, if any player, including myself, were to place a disc on any of these spots here, then we would get a linking bonus. And so in this example, both the red and the purple player would get an advancement on that top orange track for doing so. If I had placed my own disc there, I would not get this bonus twice. <laughs> I would only get it once, unfortunately. Right. And now moving on to the final action, which is called journaling. Mm -hmm. So journaling allows you to place one of your discs onto an available journal space. Again, your vessel has to be in that zone, sure. uh, same thing with the conservation action. But also when taking this action, there must also be a journal in the display that has the symbol as shown on the journaling spot. And so in this example, it requires me to have a brown X on any of the journals there which pertain to these two. And so when taking this action, I have to also pay research uh, similar to the conservation action, but I also get a benefit depending on what it says on the journal itself. There's always gonna be a combination of benefits at the bottom that have a symbol to the left that tell you how you receive these benefits. Sure. And so in this example, um, the lightning bolt is always an immediate benefit that you get. So I would get two advancements on the blue track, plus I would get to promote one of my junior specialists onto its senior side. And so that is how you get to flip Flip over your specialist tiles. They're always better. In addition, this symbol down here means everybody else gets the benefit that's in this box. So I wouldn't get this benefit, but all other players would get it when I take this journal, sure. which is nice for everybody else. Some journals give you a benefit that you can use once per round as symbolized by that symbol, and others give you a benefit when you discard the journal. So this one gives me a benefit if I discard it at the start of my turn. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially how journals work. And those are also the main actions that you'll be able to take over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. There are a few other things that we didn't discuss, such as some locations may come locked. And so you'll see keys on some of these boards that will allow you to unlock those locations. You'll also see link benefits across different tracks, such as on this board here, which provides a link benefit on the sonar track. Mm -hmm. And each mission will also have a different impact board. And so we briefly discussed the impact when gaining certain benefits. But anytime you see this star benefit, when taking an action, you get uh, impact. And so gaining impact allows you to take one of your discs and place it on the impact track, either on one of the entrance locations as depicted by one of these arrows, just mm -hmm. like that, yep. immediately gaining the benefit of the space, or you can place a disc adjacent to one that's already on the board. And this could include other players. You do not have to just branch off from yourself. Exactly. So if on my turn I gain impact, I can place here, which would then get me one research. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, any impact that you have in the yellow zones is gonna be one point, and in any of the orange zones is worth two points. Exactly. And each space can only hold one player's cubes, except for any space that has an infinity symbol. These can hold any number of player cubes. Yep. 
And that's essentially it. Mm -hmm. As soon as all players pass during this phase, that ends the round, and then you move on to the next round. At the end of the sixth round, the game ends and players go into final scoring. At this point, players will score points for each of their attribute tracks depending on how far along their cubes are. And these points are depicted at the very top of each column here, up to a maximum of 10 each. You'll also score points for the impact board depending on which spaces your cubes are on. Each mission also has a certain number of mission goals. And so for mission number one, our our goals are one point per sonar disc in the ocean, one point per journal disc in the ocean, as well as one point per conservation disc in the ocean. So that also kind of influences what action types you take during the game. Mm -hmm. In addition, each goal has its own leader bonus. So whoever does the best is going to get five, three, and seven, respectively, depending on the goal. Mm -hmm. As well as the second place points. Mm -hmm. And lastly, each of the tier five specialists, when promoted to their senior side, provide an asymmetric end game uh, scoring criteria. Sure. For example, the legendary AI developer will just get you four points, but the legendary mentor gets you one point for each senior specialist other than this one. And so this is kind of a way where uh, players can earn asymmetric uh, endgame points. Sure. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins. And that is the basic idea of how you play Endeavor. But again, this is a mission or scenario based game. And so there are eight different uh, scenarios that are going to come with the retail game that all have their own sort of uh, asymmetric scoring criteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you can see, you have to be cautious of the tracks as well as the fact that you're going to get more actions as the game progresses along. Now, we didn't discuss the cooperative or solo modes of play, but for more information, we encourage you to check out their Game Found campaign, which is linked in the description below. Now, if you have any questions about the game, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope it was helpful. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.